So here we are again, I'm cracking on with this uh, Twin Otter cockpit project and uh, got most most of the panels are done now, you can see them behind me probably, not very well. Uh, latest one just completed today, it's not actually completed, I'm short of a few components, this is uh, the uh, main kind of I suppose top console which is going to be directly in front of me. Um, when I'm sitting in the cockpit, get on on your uh, <coughs> Got a couple of uh, the main pre planned panel still to do is the um, overhead, which uh, I'll do probably by next weekend. And I've got a couple of other panels I want to do, they're much simpler ones. I want uh, something to hold the elite radios and also my. Com2 and probably ADF radio, which is going to be a SciTech panel. So um, they're going to be relatively straightforward to do. So now, in, in parallel to all that, what I've been putting off is really designing some kind of framework within which to fit all of this stuff. Um, and notably, the overhead panels. I've got one overhead main panel, which is the one I just showed you. I've got the start panel is going to be overhead. Not quite overhead, but you know, above the screens and right in front of me. And then I'm going to have another 60 centimeter panel to the left of that, holding the radios. But I can't really put off any longer the inevitability of having to find some sort of support structure scaffold for this. Um, otherwise, I'm not going to be able to put it together, and I'm going to be stuck. So, um, so I've been doing that today, just roughly. Um, this is the. Hope, hopefully, you can see that. Um, this is the layout of the cockpit with all the panels shown. If you can see this from there, it's um, the panels are everything outlined in orange. Is a panel, uh, and this is based at the moment around the elite yoke, which I'm using, which is pretty big. Um, I am hoping to imminently um, get one of the early. Iris force feedback yokes. That's I don't know when that was. Nominally, it was originally due about now, uh, May. We're in May the May the twelfth or something today. Uh, anyway, never mind. When that comes, that's going to be much smaller than the elite yoke. So there'll be uh, so there'll be no problem fitting that in. The elite's probably the biggest yoke. Of all the ones I've had, we're definitely the biggest yoke of all the yokes I've, I've had. So, um, so anything else should retrofit into this cockpit. Um, again, it's based around the the same display that I've been using for the last five years, which is three four by three 19 inch LCD monitors, and we'll be using Track IR. It's going to be in two parts, really, and the two parts will be joined together. The main the main part, which is for this lower console with all those panels on. Uh, it's basically going to be just a flat, um, uh, I don't know how you describe it, but just, just a flat plane um, essentially. So it's a framework rather like you know the framework for a, a deck or something like that. Um, and it'd be sloping down at uh, something like a, I don't know, 20 degree angle or some, something like that to be determined really once I've made it because I'm not quite sure the the best slope for the pad. I don't want the panel to be completely vertical, that, that will be quite right, although it is vertical in the real thing. That framework actually, once I've sat down and started to think about it, um, it's going to be fairly straightforward, It'll be made of timber essentially, and I want to make it, it's going to be held together with coach bolts so it's dismantleable easy, easily uh, for when I have to move it. And also certain strategic parts of it, in particular where the, the panels actually mount on the overhead part, that, that's going to be adjustable. Because uh, it's I think it's pointless to try and plan out the exact measurements of this ahead of time, because it'll be wrong. Uh, so what I want to do is leave it flexible enough and the structure's big enough so that the adjustable parts can be moved around uh, until I get the right angles and uh, and distances, really. And then, really, you know, we'll be into the the meat of the project, which is 
um, wiring it up. I'm not looking forward to, you know, the, the nuts and bolts of that. Um, it's going to be a lot of work. I mean, just taking one of these panels as an example. Taking the, this is a simple panel. This is the start. I mean, it's essentially the start panel. Um, so it has the start switch here, left and right, and a um, bunch of other things. It's got a couple of track IR controls in here. Probably like 27 wires need to be soldered just just as a starting point for making this panel live. And um, when I say just as a starting point, notionally you just take the ends of those wires and plug them into the solderless contacts on the Bodner controller board. Now the problem with that is, because I've got so many panels and this all over the place, and all, all the Bodner boards, controller boards together, um, and I want the panels to be detachable, and you know, so I can take them out and tweak them, it's not going to be that simple. Otherwise I'm going to end up with lots of very long wires, and any time I want to take a panel away to fiddle with it, I'm going to have to pull them, all the wires out of the controller which is very impractical. So what I want to do is have some sort of umbilical connection. So all the wires for this board, for example, will exit in one bundle and there'll be some kind of connector on here. I don't know if this is going to be possible, but if you imagine, so like it is, I don't know what I said, 30, 30 connectors on here. If you imagine there was a 30-way edge connector, um, and then in principle you could just uh, you could pull it out, take this panel away, tweak it, plug it back in with minimal fuss and all the controls are wired up again. Um, and of course the problem with that is it doubles the work, well it more than doubles the work, uh, triples the work really, because you've got to, not only do you solder the wires onto the terminals of the switches, you've got to then solder the other end onto the terminals of the edge connector or whatever kind of connector yeah, I end up using. And you look at something like the um, the GPS board, that's just, you know, insane numbers of components. And the board below it's not much less complicated. And, you know, <laughs> I'm going to... Um, I'm probably not going to do it quite that flexibly because I can't, you know... I was going to say I'm no good at soldiering, I will be by the end of that, but um, you know that's just going to take forever. But that's all got to be done and you know ideally these tag solder wires are all going to have heat shrink uh, around each solder co connection. What's really interesting is I've learnt you know I've learnt a lot about how to make these panels as I've gone along and each one's got better. I mean that original panel now, although I was thrilled with it and I still am, you know it's a great it's a great uh, start, but compared to the latest panels, you know, it's um, it looks ho it looks looks horrible. In fact, what I'll probably what I'll probably do is um, I'll dismantle this. I'll I'll reuse the um, the acrylic sheets because because even even there's a couple of cracks in there. That's not the main problem. But I'll tidy up the holes. I'll reprint the graphics on paper. I think um, because it comes out so well. And I'll just reassemble that, and uh, and of course I'll tidy up the ends as well because I've remember we've got white stripes at the end. But um, you know, compared to the later panels, I've found better ways of cutting the um, acrylic. I've got color graphics on this one as well, and uh, actually the density is better. I got um, I'm using genuine HP cartridges now because those um, Curry's um, refilled ones are shit basically. And the other thing I've done is I've, I've got some HP 80 GSM paper which is better than the generic um, copier printer paper. Another interesting thing I've done on here, but I was running out of things to put on this panel so <laughs> I've done a couple of things um, just you know making this up as I go along really and um, and it's you know I really enjoy just the uh, um, just, just you know, you can let your 
you let yourself go wild really. I mean there's nothing you can't do, you can do anything you want. So what I've got is um I've I've taken apart a pair of USB speakers and I've mounted well I haven't done it yet, but I'm gonna mount the speakers, I've made two grills, one at each end. Um and bearing in mind this panel's gonna be directly in front of me. Um and those speakers are gonna be for the ATC comms. So here we are again and for the first time I'm actually sitting in the Twin Otter. This is the superstructure for the cockpit itself. Um, this is made of 2 inch by 1 inch rough sawn timber. Just completed it today. It's almost complete, not quite. There's one bit missing and that's the hanger for the throttles power levers and so, uh, and so on. That's going to go... I know exactly where it's going to go but I, I, it's it's very precise and it's written down but it's approximately there. It's going to be the power lever uh, a little bit further forward actually and then in fact we've got three quadrants side by side. I'll explain why that is later on. So I've got to make the hanger for that I, the reason I haven't done that today is I'm short of some bits. I need to, to make a mounting plate and I also need some 4mm machine screws to match the threads on the bottom of the quadrants. But that's the only bit that's missing. Everything else is here. Obviously it's not enclosed. I will at some point be putting sides and a top to plug all the gaps once the panels are fitted. Got the mounting rails if you like for the overhead panel. I think that's a bit high to be honest. In fact everything above the screen is a little bit high. Probably could have done with being five or six centimeters lower and also that mounting rail for the overhead panel itself could be a little bit lower. It's going to be a stretch. Um, not too much of a stretch but it's going to be a little bit unrealistic. I think it's a bit more claustrophobic in real life but it's going to be good. It's not going to be a problem. If the worst comes to the worst, I can lower that, but I'm not going to bother for now. So what else can I tell you? This is fairly sturdy framework. We've got, it's in two parts really, you might not see that. The main console is a flat plane here at the front, and that was made independently. It's on a bit of an angle, 30 degree angle or something, 25 degree angle. I experimented with that to see what was more or less felt right and that's that's about it. It's a little bit closer to me than I'd hoped it was going to be. So we have the centre console here, GPS console there, the lower console with the nav, rotary controls, the test panel. Below that we've got a little, you can't see that's off the, oh, oh shoot, that little tray down the bottom there that's for the center console which has got the autopilot override um, switches and also the rudder trim probably a couple other things can't remember now very interesting uh, what you can probably see in the background these straps this is quite a sturdy structure I've used blocks at every 90 degree angle to give me some rigidity and strength and also just to help keep the structure square and that worked great but when you get to this sort of size a meter or more um, extent for some of these uprights it really starts to become a little bit wobbly and I decided it needed some bracing as well now I was going to brace it with timber I had to go out and buy some more timber um, problem with that was that's okay right at the back of the frame and it does make a difference even putting some uh, diagonal braces in and just clamping them temporarily that makes a big difference at the back of the frame but actually it needs bracing as close to this plane as possible and the problem with that is nothing can intrude on the screen area obviously I've only got one screen here at the minute three in the final uh, cockpit 
So, so what I did temporarily was I've used these compression straps. These are for sticking luggage on your roof rack and I did that as a temporary measure. I've got it going far corner to near top corner and the same on the other side. So that braces in two different directions. And that worked so well, even though it was a temporary measure, I decided to keep it rather than get, get timber and bolts and you know make the structure even more heavy and more complicated, more unwieldy. I thought we'll just leave just leave it braced like that. The other thing about it is of course I can take it off easily and move it around and adjust it. So um that's that's fine and those straps were pretty cheap. They do intrude onto the space behind the screens obviously but that's not really a problem. There's nothing gonna be behind the screens except at the moment just my some comms stuff, my router and um, a switch and a couple of disk drives. So that's that's not a problem. What's missing is a radio panel here, that's going to be about 50 centimetres wide. It's going to basically fill this space. It's going to have the elite radios on, maybe a few other little things, maybe just some graphics. I've got to find some way to fill the rest of the, the roof space if you like. I don't know, I don't think I'll make panels for that. I, just, I might just make something. Well, I might make panels with hardboard instead of acrylic or something like that. I just paint them black. Um, same for the left hand side. I've got to make one more panel for here. That's a 30 by 30 panel which is going to hold the SciTech radio panel and not much else actually. We'll have to see about that. And then down the left again just filler panels are going to be probably what goes in there. I might have something like a map pocket or something like that. It's just something to finish it off really. Anyway, that's probably enough for, for one day. Uh, Alright, more as it happens.